Now, it's like you to look at both sides, and those feet are getting stretched farther and farther apart. Now, here's how I plan to put this together. First, we'll talk about some of the general challenges in mobile UC. Uh, basically, why this thing isn't hitting on all eight cylinders. Uh, basically, what's going on? Where, where does this gap come from? Uh, and we'll talk about a couple of general strategies for how we can close the app. Uh, it's either we to go toward the UC end of this, or we go toward the mobility end. I'm thinking the latter might be the stronger strategy. Uh, of course, to do that, you do have to be familiar with what's going on uh, in the mobility side. So we'll talk about some of the major issues we are facing in mobility. That is, when I go to the mobility conferences, what is the stuff we're actually talking about? Because UC is not on that list. Uh, then as a wrap-up, some general directions about how we might get there. Now first, uh, oops, I guess, oh, yeah, I should probably push the right button a little better. There we go. <laughs> Challenges in mobile UC. First couple of general observations. First, what is happening overall in wireless? Number one, life is great. This is absolutely the most exciting place you want to be in networking today. Of course, most of that is centered around the consumer experience. Uh, and basically, what our users are coming into the office looking for is really being shaped by that consumer mobile experience, which is highly evolved at this stage of the game. Uh, also, it's devices. Uh, services are essentially out of the picture. Uh, actually, services were out of the picture some time ago. The uh, uh, only thing ATT had a few years back to differentiate themselves from Verizon and Sprint was the fact that they had the iPhone. Of course, it was crushing their network, but they had the <laughs> iPhone, and that's what people wanted. Uh, of course, now all popular devices are available from all the major suppliers. Uh, smartphones, by the way, are now outselling basic phones in the United States. That crossover point came last year. Uh, this is important both for what we look at in the market. It's also important for the carriers of business because it means they're uh, one of the great growth opportunities. Uh, yeah, the ma major, magic word among mobile operators is ARPU, uh, average revenue per user. A uh, strategy for increasing which involved uh, first getting them off the basic phone onto a feature phone so you could sell them a texting plan. A uh, big move was get them off the feature phone onto a smartphone, then you got 30 bucks a month on a data plan. Uh, unfortunately, they've just about saturated that market now and might have to actually get creative to increase revenues. With 4G wireless networks are catching up with the wired networks with regard to reliability and capacity. Uh, 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 Verizon is clearly leading the way in this and all the performance tests we're seeing, but Still, uh, spectrum demand is outstripping supply. If those projections that Cisco is making regarding the growth in video or uh, mobile traffic based on video, uh, that growth curve looks like this. Our ability to increase capacity in the mobile world is looking more like this. Uh, another one of those gaps we need to cross. That's the big picture in, in wireless. Now the big question is, what's going on in mobile UC? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, I listen to these keynotes all the time. I love this stuff. Anyway, it's like, they love to talk about my mobility business. Uh, but here's the frank truth. Uh, now, I chair the, uh, the, the mobility track at Enterprise Connect. So I, there at all the sessions, um, I get to ask the questions. And every year, uh, I do my great survey question. Uh, so the audience, and, I mean, the mobility tracks are going big now. We're getting 300 people in each one of these sessions. And I ask the basic question. So, now, what do you guys know about this Java stuff, the One X, OpenScape Mobile, yada, yada, yada? How many here are actually using that? And actually, this year, I was kind of surprised. About 20, 25% of the hands in the audience went up. I said, wow, looking pretty good. I said, okay, vendor guys, put your hands down. <laughs> there were about two hands left in the air after that second question. Um, so in essence, yeah, talk is great, but clearly, uh, these things are not being picked up on. And that's one of the questions we want to ask. Why is this thing not hitting on all eight cylinders? Now, uh, in terms of what we are doing, in mobile UC, we are focusing on this picture of mobility. That is, knowledge workers with smartphones and tablets doing knowledge worker work. That is one part of what we look at in mobility. What about this mobility? I mentioned Bob Carter from Federal Express this morning. Son of a gun not only changed his entire company, he changed his entire industry by looking at how to creatively admit that Carter is like a god among the mobility set. Uh, because he did this back when the tools were nowhere near as sophisticated as they are now. I mean, data networks, mobile data networks back in those days, you were lucky if you got 1,400 bits a second. 
So son of a gun, they designed terminals that had an application. Um, they designed a solution that could work in a network that may be working at 4,800 bits a second. Uh, of course, point of sale, of course, we're moving beyond this now. And uh, uh, I use, to use one of Marty's favorite terms, computer-enabled business processes. Uh, this is a picture of what it looks like, or this one. So one of the big revenue opportunities that uh, we're looking for in the mobile space today Machine-to-machine -machine communication. Uh, we're now we're slapping modems on soda machines. Uh, well, you are starting to see the, uh, the, the, the carrier ads, the operator ads, are starting to look at uh, tracking equipment assets. Uh, tons of these applications showing up in the healthcare field. So we're actually moving beyond even just a smartphone and an application. Uh, we're looking at really integrating our technology into a fully automated process. Where's you seeing this? Yeah. the. Uh, the mobile industry is going in one direction, and UC is stuck in this one little corner. We've got to start thinking bigger. So the basic challenges, uh, to wrap up this first part, um, essentially what we've been doing is trying to do business with consumer tools. Uh, no, no offense to our dear friends at Cisco and their enterprise-oriented uh, CS tablet. Now, CS tablet uses the gingerbread version of the Android operating system. Um, now, one of the downsides of Gingerbread is that uh, you, you cannot do uh, hardware, native hardware-based on-device encryption in Android 2.3. We don't recommend Android 2.3 devices for mobile customers. <coughs> don't? Yeah, we, we're into like that ice cream sandwich and the, uh, the, the honeycomb one. Yeah, 3.04 though. That's what, honest to God, we don't recommend you use that in an enterprise environment. Uh, it's the enterprise tablet though. Um, challenge now. Now we have, here's what really the, the, the two biggest things I spend time talking to my clients about. The short term challenge, uh, this is the, the trade off in BYOD. Bring your own device, balancing user requests and preferences uh, with enterprise requirements for security, control, and support. Uh, that's the focus you should be looking on in the near term. Uh, that's where things like mobile security, mobile device management come into play. That's the stuff we're really talking about today. Uh, interestingly, I just uh, completed a, a report for Information Week. Uh, I do a lot of the, uh, the survey stuff for Information Week analytics and the uh, uh, one we just published. It's actually, if you go to uh, uh, reports.informationweek.com and click on the mobility tab, I think it's the first one that's on there. It's the mobile security survey for 2012. Um, so we got to go out and ask users uh, uh, what percent, have the, uh, the percentages later, what percentage are actually uh, going BYOD or plan to in the near future, how they're doing it. Uh, a wealth of information to give you a flavor of really where the, uh, the, the enterprise uses are with regard to mobility today. Uh, the uh, answer you'll see from the report is woefully unprepared. Uh, oh yeah, the, uh, the, the, the BYOD horse, the horse is getting way in front uh, of the security and manageability cart here. Uh, of course, what I was trying to emphasize with my clients uh, is uh, that's really the short-term objective. See, the real objective at the end of the day is enabling business transformation through mobility. Um, that's what Federal Express did. That's, that's what the successful mobile companies are doing today. Uh, of course, uh, BYOD might very well turn out to be an obstacle in that. See, if we're stuck in this paradigm that everything is based on apps, uh, well, if I'm going to have to support four or five different platforms, I'll need four or five different versions of that app, which just made my life four or five times more miserable. Um, now, of course, there is a, uh, a potential other end game here, and uh, Phil Edholm is going to be talking about part of it on Wednesday morning, uh, which is the uh, app development using HTML5, which could change the paradigm entirely in the mobility space, because at that point, it's not about having an app. Everything runs in the browser. Um, See. So Everything we're thinking about in terms of mobility is predicated on the availability of apps. That whole game could change with HTML5. If it does, uh, uh, the, the, the deck in mobility could shift entirely. It wouldn't matter if you It would give guys like Windows Phone a shot. Uh, actually, even BlackBerry could get a shot. Uh, <laughs> talk about being disconnected from reality. One of the newsletters I was reading this morning before we started up, uh, uh, BlackBerry World was last week, and uh, Thorsten Hines, the uh, new CEO of BlackBerry, uh, uh, gave the keynote and confused everyone that the. Uh, but uh, Thorsten uh, uh, came back again this weekend, wanted to be sure that uh, he was clear that BlackBerry was not abandoning the consumer market. 
Boy, does that put my mind to rest. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell is abandoning whom in this movie? How disconnected from reality do you have to be? Oh, this is what, but the end game we're looking at here is think about how you change the business. Now let's talk about how, what, well, what's going on now. Uh, first off, when we're looking at enterprise mobility, I look at three basic benefits we look at. Accessibility, productivity, and information. Uh, accessibility, we can reach, reach critical people at critical times. Uh, critical people are generally either the guy who knows the answer to that particular question, or, or the guy with the management level that can improve an exception, uh, and we can take care of that customer issue. Productivity, uh, we've seen that in spades. Um, uh, certainly with mobile email and all this other Jim Dandy stuff that comes falling behind, though, well, most of what we're seeing thus far is still in the way of canned applications. Um, so basically, the, we're getting our mobile application from SAP, from Oracle, from Salesforce.com. Uh, we're not really seeing a whole lot of specialized line of business, customized application uh, development as yet. Um, I was speaking at Interop in the last, uh, uh, or yesterday morning and afternoon, uh, and where it, we only found one or two apps, um, and this was an audience of a couple of hundred people, all IT specialists in mobility, uh, and most of those, by the way, were really geared toward B2C stuff. Uh, you know, the ones, the ones that usually the marketing department has, rather than internal applications. Uh, so productivity and information. Uh, one of the few ways enterprises can uh, differentiate themselves today uh, is by getting to information more quickly. The result? The short term is business responsiveness, faster decision making, faster customer problem resolution. The longer term though, and the goal that I always try to emphasize is, how can you change your business doing this? And unfortunately we don't have a lot of examples like Federal <coughs> Express as yet. However, I think with this move to M to M, we're gonna start seeing a lot more of that and that's the place you're probably gonna to wanna to be playing. Now, face value, FMC, and mobile UC should be a success. Uh, for the time being, our primary mechanism for fixed mobile convergence is called call forwarding. Um, I forward my call to the mobile. Call, that's a new one. Um, or equivalence, which would be simultaneous ring, progressive ring, whatever the heck you got to do. Call forwarding. Um, but it should be a success. Because when you think of it, we still need a business telephone system. Um, though I have heard of many of the mobile conferences, the uh, mobile guy said, well, what do you need this PBX for? You've got mobile phones. Well, pal, how, how about an attendant? <laughs> how about like group pickup? Um, emergency services when the lights go out. Uh, how about, an auto, imagine doing an automatic call distribu distribution system using cell phones? It's gonna work. Um, I mean, no concept of what we use in business to left uh, Of course, and users divide their time between work and, uh, and mobile. We do our best to try to shuffle calls between the two environments. Uh, and USC does provide better communication tools. Uh, certainly, folks that are out on the road, uh, access to their, co uh, their colleagues' presence should be something that they value, um, but they're passing it by. Uh, also, uh, uh, integration of the wired network, and if we can, uh, do these dual mode versions, uh, where when we're in the office, the uh, calls go over the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi network, those things can actually pay for themselves. Not the easiest thing to do. A few years back, I uh, did write a book on voice over wireless land, the complete guide. The, the book is 400 pages long, uh, which means you, you can do voice over wireless land. It took me 400 pages to explain why. This, this is not going to be an easy trip. So, <laughs> options, we've got them out the wazoo. Um, from the dual mode Wi Fi cellular ones, uh, the NEC and uh, Shortel are certainly still pursuing those options. Uh, most are moving now to a more sort of cellular only versions, or if they do involve a Wi Fi element, uh, the shift between the two is done manually. Uh, we have the web based clientless ones, which are actually starting to look pretty good on tablets. Uh, some of the carriers are getting into this, Sprint with their mobile integration. Uh, we have a dual mode version from T Mobile, but this is what's happening. Uh, this wasn't one of my surveys, and I pal Grant Marshall did this one on, uh, on Wi Fi trends. And the question is uh, what's your take on fixed mobile conversions? The, we've deployed it as the skinny little 4% uh, slice up here at the top. Uh, my favorite is, uh, not interested, uh, never heard of it. Uh, that's about 25, 30% uh, of the market over that corner. Uh, the uh, interested but no specific plans were the biggest ones. Um, so there is interest, it's just nobody's jumping the broom here. The, um, so 
Why not? This is the question that, is, uh, that, that has plagued me for the last five years as I've watched this develop. Uh, I mentioned part of it before, which is mobility decisions are made by the mobility crew, and the mobility crew doesn't care. Mobility is a topic in UC. UC is not a topic in mobility. Um, of course, a lot of it has to do with product satisfaction. Um, so again, the tools just aren't up to snuff. Uh, the, uh, the user is used to an integrated, smooth running experience in those consumer tools, um, and they tried the mobile UC thing, and they've got themselves a left-handed monkey wrench. Um, it just doesn't cut the mustard. Uh, we see trials. Generally, they don't extend much beyond the IT department. Uh, it just doesn't meet the user requirements. Uh, also, here's the big one. Many of the stuff we're trying to do in UC, we've been doing in smartphones forever. Just click the call, old news. Ability to reach the guy in any one of these things, text him. God, I can even do that on my Blackberry. Um, <laughs> and it works a lot smoother. It doesn't involve loading another application and uh, taking me off in a completely different dire direction. I like the way my smartphone works. Um, why change it? Um, also, Celio Myers, this is one of the big ones. We'll talk a lot about this in a moment. Celio Myers operate independently of IT. Um, and with a completely different set of issues. Uh, and in terms of voice over wireless LAN, for whatever reason, uh, most users have this belief. Um, it is purely a matter of faith, mind you, but a belief that their wireless LANs cannot support voice. I can tell you categorically they are wrong. Any wireless LAN can support voice, even the one you have at home. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of how much. It's how many calls you're going to put on there before you start to uh, impact. And of course, you do it wrong. You can shoot yourself in the foot with a major lead gun. Uh, you see, one of the great things, the, uh, wireless science is still a shared media environment. Everyone's buying to get on the same channel. So we came up with this great idea. It's called quality of service. Uh, now, quality of service does not increase your capacity. It's just uh, affecting the pecking order. So in essence, with quality of service, which is called 802.11e or Wi-Fi multimedia, we have the ability to push the voice guys to the front of the line. Now, by definition, if you're pushing somebody to the front of the line, somebody else, yeah, we uh, refer to 802.11e as the New Yorker's approach to waiting in line. Cut to the front. The, uh, <laughs> of course, the problem is, <clears throat> if you turn all these voice guys loose and give them highest priority, you can effectively squeeze out all the data capacity of your wireless LAN. Uh, this is why that book took 400 pages. Uh, but certainly there's this lack of faith, uh, but nobody has actually, most organizations haven't even bothered to try it. They just assume it isn't going to work and look in the other direction. Now, how is this going to change the, uh, with the, the advent of BYOD? It makes it worse rather than better. Um, <laughs> short answer. See, the end user is now going to be in the control of the decision. One of the things that blows my mind about this, this is when you know somebody's not serious. Because um, I asked the vendors, well, what do you think about the uptake of these, uh, this mobile here you see? They said, oh, man, you should see all the downloads we're getting. What idiot counts that as success in a mobile application? They downloaded it. <clears throat> you know what percentage of the applications they download on my smartphone I dump within a day? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, it's a free, what the heck, sure, download it, ah, sucks, boom, gone. Um, well, we have to, I mean, people who are successful in this mobile stuff have analytics. What a word. Yeah, we know what they're logged on, we know which parts they're using, or how often they're using them. Uh, yeah, and we go back and talk to the users, we <coughs> understand, and it's uh, st uh, uh, measure, study, verify, improve. Uh, there is a process improvement that goes along. That's why the guys that are good at this are good at it. It's not, it wasn't a matter of luck. Well, maybe the fart apps, but that's another matter. The, uh, <laughs> but basically, the, the vendors have to have products that entice the users. They create long-term, and that's the key, is long-term value. Uh, I mean, mobile got, people using mobile applications, real fickle population, get bored easy. I mean, the attention span of a ferret and a double espresso. Uh, I mean, you, you gotta keep giving them new stuff. You can't, I mean, oh, we're, we're working on the upgrade for this. It's gonna be out in the, you know, a year and a day. Wow, great, it's pretty bad now, and I'll get two more features in a year and a day. Sign me up. Uh, oh no, good mobile applications. Like every couple of months, they're throwing you a new trick. I mean, they basically, they want you back on it. They want you trying a new trick. Yeah, some of the tricks work, some of the tricks don't. Uh, but that's that's the, the pace you have to work at if you're going to be successful in mobility. Uh, you know, once every two years doesn't make it. Uh, basically, it's a problem. I, I run into this with the uh, the vendors. 
if they, you want to be successful, it's time to start thinking about what users want, not what your engineering department can produce. Um, why do you think Apple was so good at this? Because they had a real, uh, of an arrogant son of a gun in charge of things, and he wouldn't take no for an answer. He was looking at what the customer wanted and beat the engineering guys into delivering it. So uh, it's going to take a little more to be a success, and the stakes are high here. Now, so what are, if, if it's not UC, what are we talking about mobility? Well, let's talk first about the original problem. Now, mobility was a separate area inside of IT. In some cases, mobility wasn't and still isn't inside of the IT infrastructure. Uh, yeah, purchasing function, which sure, came about in a moment. Uh, also, this mobility group is not at all integrated with the PBXs or the UC, the wireless lands. It is the guys who buy cell phones, period. Um, and there's a bunch of pressing issues there. One of the biggest ones, and uh, what I was talking about it, uh, uh, in my, my sessions at Interop yesterday, uh, was what we have to do to accommodate BYOD, mobile device management systems, how do we secure this, uh, development and distribution, control of applications, mobile malware, um, and of course, they're getting advice from the cellular reps, not from anyone else. Now, things are starting to change. Um, it's, this is something I've noticed really in the, probably the biggest thing I've noticed in the mobility market in the last couple of years. Uh, the buyer was originally a purchasing function. Think about it, buying cell phones. Cell phones are cell phone. Uh, difference, cents per minute. Um, and maybe I get a better deal on the like, replacement handsets or some stuff like that. We, we argue a lot about contract terms and junk and selling contracts. And, but it was a purchasing function. BlackBerry was the first move in IT. Now, IT had to get involved in that. It was primarily an operations role. Yeah, we had to work out the interface between the BlackBerry server and the, uh, and the Exchange server. Uh, and generally, it was the IT guys who were taking care of the BEZ. You know, the BEZ administrator was an IT guy. But uh, once the iPhone hit, the whole game changed. Because it was the iPhone that really introduced this app mania. Uh, we did have apps for the, uh, uh, for, for the BlackBerry. But generally speaking, one of the things that killed BlackBerry was their, their, their own administrators. Uh, yeah, one, of the, one of the things that brought BYOD uh, about is we called the overzealous BEZ administrator. Uh, the guy that screwed out every capability in that BlackBerry so he could do nothing more than do email and sit like a rock in your pocket. Uh, I mean, they, basically, they gave the administrators the ability to put them out of business. What a stroke of genius. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, BYOD is making it an issue. Uh, and we are seeing different approaches. Uh, the uh, unenlightened approach, uh, I use this term a couple of times, get them an email and, and bye bye. That, that's it. Disengage from mobility. Um, I uh, used the term here a little later. I, I wrote an article about this in, uh, uh, in No Jitter uh, a couple of months back. Uh, my, my articles can stink, but the title is the best ever. The, uh, the, title, the title of this one was Head in the Sand, Career in the Toilet. <laughs> she was this idea that if they, it's going to be their own device, great, give it to them, we'll just withdraw all support. Now, this is the single most important development that's going on in IT, so let's run like hell and get away from it. Uh, <laughs> sink or swim, leave it. Head in the sand, career in the toilet. Uh, of course, the enlightened approach, which we are starting to see catch on, uh, is um, even regardless of who owns the device, security, management, support, all that stuff are still key IT responsibilities. And much more importantly, as this becomes more important in the user's life, uh, in many cases, way more important than this UC stuff. This is what we want to see engaged in. Uh, see, one of the views I have in this world is that uh, merger might not happen. It might be and either we do it this way or we do it this way. Uh, the phrase I was using in Enterprise Connect is, yeah, we're going to do UC. The question is, is it going to be Link or LinkedIn? Yeah, maybe we move over to those other tools that are built around the mobility view um, and abandon the other ones we've been hearing about. Yeah, so this, uh, th this could be big sticks. Uh, where are we? Okay, so what are they by? MDM, Mobile Security Solutions. Take a look at some of these. The uh, MDM is probably the hottest one today and one of the toughest markets to be. Of, of our SI guys represented, anybody handling M MDM solutions? Who, who, who are you packing? Uh, Good and uh, and also uh, Microsoft uh, systems and oh, my, the, 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 with the, the Odyssey stuff on top of it or just the, the pure uh, Microsoft one. Just pure. Yeah. Oh, what, what, what do you have? Uh, mobile Iron, AirWatch, and FiberLink. 
Okay, we got uh, so we're gonna, uh, we're going to put up the uh, uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant MDM in a moment. That's what I was going to think. So there's a, there was somebody else over this way. Yeah. Good near watch. Good near. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll put it this way. You, you guys are landing in the Magic Quadrant, but I, I probably don't have to tell you that. <laughs> I'm sure Air Watch will have told you because they told me about 16 times. Right. Now, in terms of how much of this BYOD is going on, this is, this is from the uh, Global Security Survey that I just finished for, uh, uh, for Information Week. Uh, currently, whoops, well, that was a, oh, that, yeah, this is the slide I was supposed to look at. Hang on, let's go back for here a sec. Uh, the 62% uh, are currently supporting some BYOD uh, with another 24%. Add those together, that's 86% of respondents either have this or are planning to do it within the next year. Uh, unfortunately, my next slide got eaten, but it was a, uh, a description of what the device policies are. So if you're good at reading black on black, uh, uh, I'll give you the short skinny on this. Uh, there was a right answer in this. Uh, it was chosen by 40% of the respondents. The right answer was, uh, we support, uh, and this was asked of those who do support BYOD. Uh, we support a limited range of defined devices and those devices must have our MDM software on them. Uh, that is called a best practices solution in mobility today. That was 40% of the respondents, which means the other 60% are coming in below the bar, uh, uh, which might be sending us to the bar. The, uh, now, posture is also very important. Here's my line that had the sand career in the toilet. Uh, for, for most organizations, this, this question actually came up with, uh, uh, at, at uh, breakfast this morning. Somebody asked me what I thought about BYOD. And my answer was very frank. My opinion doesn't matter. It's happening with or without. I mean, actually, I would prefer we didn't have it because it would make our lives in IT a hell of a lot simpler. Unfortunately, that's no longer the reality. So you either make believe it's not happening or adapt. Uh, and uh, adapting is a much better strategy. Uh, of course, regardless of who owns the device, uh, in a well-managed organization, it is still IT's responsibility for security, management, and compliance. Uh, but it does mean changing focus. And that focus is arguing with users is a losing battle. Forget about that one, ain't gonna get you anywhere. Had to say a career in a toilet, but basically, uh, the IT role now has to start changing to look more as an advisor. Um, and, and in some cases, we might be suggesting we are using these consumer tools, but if we do, we also have to be sure that we do have all the adequate protections and security. We have to be sure that they can work in an enterprise-grade fashion, or uh, we have this other word we use, which is, no, you can't use that one. It just doesn't make our parameters. Uh, now, this is not a simple thing to develop, which means it is a business opportunity. Uh, customers are struggling to understand this today. And we, it, it goes by the term mobility policy, but really it's much more basic than that. It's a mobility plan. You gotta know how you're gonna handle your stuff. Uh, the policy is just where we write down the rules, roles, and responsibilities. That's the documentation we give to the users, but it's a reflection of how we've planned to handle this. Uh, and it must be a cradle to grave plan. Uh, how we acquire the device, uh, and roll with that is how we get it onto the system, how we have to maintain it for security, application support, uh, help desk functions, and when it's done, how we get rid of it securely. Uh, it gets done, it's either they upgrade it, uh, we fire them, or they willingly leave the company. Um, and we, yes, so uh, the, the biggest things we focus on at MDM is actually getting them on the thing and getting them off the thing. <laughs> um, and we want to do that with the least amount of work possible for IT. Now, we do have a load of different uh, MDM suppliers today. Uh, Gartner, uh, in their uh, Magic Quadrant survey at MDM last year, found 60 different vendors. I'll show you some of the things that they are out there. But overall, it's a major element in both managing and security. It was pioneered by BlackBerry uh, with the VEZ. The VEZ was the first mobile device management system. Uh, and now, while uh, BlackBerry is actually expanding their focus, uh, BlackBerry Fusion, they acquired a company called Ubitex last year, which will now, through the same console, allow you to manage Android and iOS devices as well as BlackBerry devices. It's not really, I mean, they have a front end, they have two servers sitting behind it. <laughs> Either talks to the Ubitex server or talks to the old Bez. Uh, cable buildings vary a lot with mobile operating systems. So one thing you gotta be prepared for and shopping for any of this stuff, um, truth is hard to find. 
Um, so you have to ask real detailed questions, because you say, well, is your system capable of doing this? Now, if their system is capable of doing that for any one of the available mobile echo systems, uh, the uh, answer they will give you is yes. You do need to know it's important to ask the next question. That, actually, I've gotten to the point now. Uh, I was doing this at Enterprise Connect. I, I, I just start with a, a paper and I write columns on it, like Android 2.x, Android 3.x, 4.x, iOS 3, iOS 4, Blackberry. Uh, and I have a list of questions. Uh, I go, OK, let's talk about uh, iOS 3. And I start asking, and they say, and, and they immediately want to switch you. No, 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 we've got, we've got columns. Now. Let's stay in this column. <laughs> and you march to the bottom, you start down the next column. Uh, that's how you find out what they can actually do. Uh, and of course, we have SAS or premise based options readily available. Uh, status is really Blackberry versus the rest of the world. Um, I'll show you uh, clearly what that means in a moment, though it's changing. Uh, currently, about, uh, this is according to the results of our survey, 25% of organizations have MDM solutions in place today, um, but with another 31%, which will bring that up to uh, 56%, uh, within the next 24 months. Um, so clearly, there's stuff selling. Highly fragmented market. Of course, there's a, a, another shortcut approach here, which is the blunt instrument approach to MDM. It's called Exchange Active Sync. Uh, IBM is the same thing in Lotus Notes Traveler. Um, yeah, those are the push email solutions, but you do have the ability to enforce passwords, on devices and do remote wipes. Uh, we refer to it as the thermonuclear remote wipe. Because um, you hit them with EAS. Um, basically, there go the baby pictures <laughs> and the MP3s and all our applications, the thermonuclear wipe. Um, the, um, might be exciting. Of course, uh, what we also found out is users are smartening up as well. Um, see, in order for us to whack them with EAS, uh, they have to have their exchange account on the mobile device. So they know if they quit the day before they give notice, they yank that account <laughs> on the mobile device that we can't help. So it works both ways. The, uh, here's the magic quadrant, though. In the, well, like most magic quadrants, you'll see a lot of stuff focused down in this quadrant rather than up in that quadrant. There are only four, actually, in the magic quadrant. Good, uh, Sybase, uh, uh, AirWatch and Mobile Iron. Uh, of course, the funniest part about this is the, uh, the most popular MDM solution in the world, the, the BlackBerry Enterprise Server, not on there. Yeah, why? Why? Gardner's requirements where you have to be able to support multiple platforms. Uh, we assume with Fusion, they will be on this year. And then we'll see where they, where they come out in this. Uh, well, a lot of stuff, and, and by the way, the one they, that they did purchase is uh, clumped out. Here's Ubitex down here. That's, that's the one they got. So, nothing like buying from the bottom. The, uh, uh, <laughs> so, nobody's got, uh, got eaten. Uh, a digital organization that have a plan to have a mobile device management system mentions 25% uh, uh, with a, uh, 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 another 31% uh, within the next two years. So, uh, markets should be going from, if they stick to their plans, from 25% currently to 56% two years out. Uh, this is my favorite uh, chart, though. This is a, it's a little harder to read, so I'll come down this way. <laughs> really hard to read, put the labels in black. Uh, but essentially, uh, uh, <laughs> look at this. I mean, I got here at midnight. <laughs> the, uh, this, uh, the lower column is, do you manage these devices today? Next one up is, Will you be doing it in 12 months? And one above that is, will you be doing it in 24 months? As you might imagine, the first column is BlackBerry. 63% per day. This is uh, 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 Apple's iOS, and this is Android. See, clearly, Android is still trailing behind in this. But look at next year. Next year, Apple is, well, they're off by one. It's 69 versus 70. Apple will essentially tie BlackBerry in the percentage of organizations managing them. Android is still coming up behind that, and then surpass them the following year. Uh, of course, one of the other surveys we did uh, looked at future buying plans for BlackBerry devices. Not a lot of future plans for buying BlackBerry devices. <laughs> so wrap up, what should we be doing about this? It looks like I might actually finish uh, early for once. It's, it's better than talking the best. The, uh, but general advice for, for SIs, number one is there is money to be made in mobility. Uh, general prescription is play where they're hitting them. That is, if that's what they're buying, that's where you want to be standing. 
Um, and what they're buying is big stuff, mobile device management. Um, that seems to be the key element. Of course, underneath that, all the various elements of mobile security. Of course, mobile security is very difficult to pin down because it's not one problem. Um, yeah, basically, what we talk about in, mo in mobile security is threat vectors, like all the different ways they could potentially hit you, uh, including things like RF jamming, uh, which does become a factor if you're dealing with a wireless network. Uh, but certainly, application security, mobile malware protection, uh, 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 mobile uh, uh, application deployment and maintenance, um, uh, VPNs. Uh, well, well, I, actually, IBM, so you see John sitting there in the back, uh, actually has one of the widest product lines in this, uh, probably as wide as, well, the, the biggest name really is Sybase. Uh, they show up in the MDM space with a Faria, rather complicated product, but they also have a whole bunch of, that's part of SAP. Uh, so they've been acquiring them. They bought a company called uh, Nucona, who specializes in mobile application distribution securely. Uh, bunches of other companies they're clumping together, uh, including software development tools, so they're into mobile applications, uh, mobile app stores, uh, mobile device management, basically covering the, IBM is almost as wide a, uh, a product line in terms of mobility, but nobody ever heard about it. Uh, uh, unless, of course, they read the column I wrote in, uh, in No Jitter after, uh, after Lotus Fear when uh, 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 Rob uh, was good enough to tell me about them. Uh, mobile security, app development, wireless LAN is still big. Um, and we're about to have another refresh on wireless LAN. It's been pretty hot on this stuff lately because we're moving from the uh, 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 A, B, G stuff to N. Uh, we're now starting to get chipsets for uh, AC. Uh, uh, that will be wireless LANs will operate potentially in excess of a billion bits a second. Uh, yeah, partially it's a more efficient, uh, more bandwidth efficient radio system, but now what they're doing essentially is moving from well, the biggest channel you can have in Item 211 in is 40 megahertz. They're now expanding to 80 or 160 megahertz. And just like old Claude Shannon figured out back in 1948, bigger the pipe, more bits you can pump down it. Uh, so we do expect to see more action in wireless LAN and loads of specialized wireless devices. Uh, a lot of that today is going to be aimed toward that M to M migration. That is going to be important. Uh, for consultants, uh, mobility is inexorably being drawn into IT. Uh, and it is one of the biggest problem areas because they really don't know who to put in charge. Should it be the infrastructure? Of course, the biggest problem I find is they uh, have one guy taking care of the cellular stuff and another guy taking care of the Wi-Fi stuff. And if that ain't stupid, I don't know what is. Uh, Basic problems of human nature. Uh, to a hammer, every problem is going to look like a nail. So if all they know about is cellular technology, every solution is going to involve cellular technology, even if the guy's not leaving the building. Um, so essentially, you'll have to handle mobility as mobility, not mobile individual mobile technologies. Uh, second, if you're dealing with a purchasing agent, you're talking that you're in the wrong ballpark. Um, this is moving beyond the purchasing agent function today. Uh, the issues of security, app development, app maintenance, all of that is where the focus is going in mobility today, clearly in the IT space, not the purchasing space any longer. Uh, and IT's job is changing from technology dictator, I used to love that job, <laughs> to, to really uh, technology enabler. Uh, of course, at the same time, abdicating responsibility is not going to be an option. Uh, it's one of the, uh, the, the problems we're actually facing in mobile security today. We're, uh, we're talking about it yesterday. Uh, the bomb hasn't gone off yet. Yet we have not had a major front page Wall Street Journal event or incident based on information getting out in the wild from a lost or stolen, poorly protected corporate or individual libel device. Um, and without something to point, we did have one in the Wi-Fi world a few years ago with TJX when they lost control of 45 million customer credit card numbers and uh, wound up paying close to $100 million in fines. That one did wind up in the front page of the Wall Street Journal and caught a lot of people's attention. Um, so it's, it's embarrassing, but we're almost hoping for disaster in this. We're just hoping it's not our disaster. <laughs> it's somebody else's, and then we can benefit from it. Um, so get, get, that's probably the biggest challenge we're facing today is, uh, if they haven't seen the problem yet, will they really believe it could potentially happen and happen to them? But again, regardless of who device, whose device it is, it's IT's job to foster smart, efficient, secure, manageable implementation of technology. Uh, so the phrase I always like to use with, uh, with clients, yeah, users are tech savvy, but IT's got to be tech smart. Um, and that's the big difference between consumer and enterprise mobility. 
Tool and tools may be the best choice, but again, we've got to be sure that they are tech smart. But letting having their uh, users have their own device is really a short-term palliative. Uh, yeah, that takes care of your short-term problem. You still got to keep your eye on the long-term goal, which is, at the end of the day, how is it, it's not about making people smile. It's about making the business more efficient, more effective, more productive, and ultimately more profitable uh, and more valuable to the shareholders. So the key is uh, integrating that technology into existing business processes in an enterprise-ready fashion. Uh, and that's what I came to talk about today. Now, I do have uh, three minutes to two, so uh, three minutes to go. So if uh, uh, anyone would like to ask a question, Russell. Oh, he's even going to the